Turning now to Seattle, where protesters have taken over the city's Capitol Hill neighborhood, declaring it a police-free autonomous zone. The goal, they say, to prove they can operate on their own without police. And they've published a list of demands for city leaders. Joining us now to discuss this is Trump 2020 Advisory Board member and former FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force member Stephen Rogers. Stephen, thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, what would you do in this case? If you, if you were in the area, what's the first thing you would want to know and the first step you would try to take? Well, to begin with, they're not protesters. They're anarchists and they're terrorists, and they're now placing our national security in jeopardy. First thing I would do right now is immediately bring the military in and to do what must be done, whatever one has to do to bring control to that city. The police ran, and I'm not blaming the cops, they were following orders, but the Democrat socialists who have taken control of these cities, being elected to office, have betrayed the citizens, they let them down, and now, because of their policies, we see what we see happening around the country exactly because of those policies. Yeah, Stephen, President Trump lashed out at the governor of Washington and the mayor of Seattle over their handling of the protests. In a tweet, he said they're being taunted and played and that if they don't take back their city, we will. So obviously the president saying, look, get it under control or we're going to take over. And that's pretty much what you're saying is to bring in the National Guard. What else? What can the police do right now? Well, right now, uh, the police, uh, as far as Seattle's concerned, are, are helpless and they're hopeless. And again, not because of them. They're heroes. They want to take action. But the uh, situation is so bad that, just to put things in perspective, we all universally, universally, we condemn the actions of those Minnesota police officers. And they should have, they should have been in jail day one. But the fact of the matter is, is because of the failure of the Democrat socialists, the mayor of Minneapolis and the governor, their failure to address the issue in their city at that time, allowing these anarchists to take control of their city, there was a trigger point for what we're seeing nationwide. So at this point, what we have to do now is go in with the necessary force, and as the president has mentioned, overpower, not excessive force, but overpower and dominate the uh, streets of that city and streets around the country to bring law and order back. Uh, Steve, let me ask you this. I, I'm going to give you uh, some tweets uh, from uh, the governor and the mayor in Seattle. Um, the first tweet uh, from, I believe, uh, Jay Inslee uh, saying, this is the governor, by the way, saying that the president should, quote, stay out of Washington state's business, end quote. And then the mayor, Jenny Durkin, telling him to go back to his bunker. Doesn't sound like they're going to be working with the president. Well, to begin with, the people living in their state and in that city are American citizens. And the first duty of government, and in this case, the president of the United States, is to protect the citizens of this country from foreign and domestic terrorists. So these people, that is the governor and the mayor, are, are, have their heads in a cloud. And in fact, they're not listening to the people begging for help. I mean, the citizens there are begging for help. So uh, my answer to them is, well, you know what, maybe they should go hide in a bunker and never come out of it. Steve, what happened over the last number of years? After 9-11, police officers were heroes. Um, and all of a sudden, I would say, I don't know, maybe the last five or six years, um, they've been shot at, they've been stabbed, they've been hit by cars, they've been called awful names. What's happened? That is a great question. And what's happened is, and, and, and I see it in law enforcement and, and even in politics, uh, we have Democrat socialists now, and I call them Democrat socialists because they're supporting a socialist agenda where they want complete and total control over the lives of the American people. So what they did was uh, they, they had uh, policies passed like bail reform and uh, uh, anti-sanctuary city uh, or I'm sorry, pro-sanctuary city policies, and then they handcuff the police to take action, and they demonize the police. And so you've got the mainstream media demonizing the police and actually making it look like the anarchists and terrorists are the heroes. So that, over a long period of time, has now resulted in what we see today. And we have to turn that around by getting people elected to office that, at the very least, are going to uphold the constitutional rights of the American people and protect them from what we're seeing take place today. We're seeing a lot of people say there might be reform in different police departments, but certainly don't defund them. But then we had the mayor of New York um, sitting with his wife who had talked about some utopia in the future in which uh, there would be no police 
officers in New York. And when you hear something like that, what kind of response do you have? Absolutely bone chilling. What we see happening in Seattle will happen all over this country. Gangs and violent criminals will take over the streets. I think the mayor of New York, he too has uh, his head in the clouds. Uh, I've got to tell you, uh, it's causing a ripple effect in law enforcement. Before, before the coronavirus, it was very difficult to recruit people into the police service. Now the academies are barely empty. Hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of police officers are now looking at early retirement, and the recruiting has virtually stopped. And that may happen here in New York. Well, it may very well happen. Uh, New York City, under Mayor Giuliani, was the greatest police department on the face of the earth, as far as I'm concerned. And with him in command, something like this would have never happened. You need tough leaders. And look, we need Republican leaders to stand up, too. In my view, some of them have been too silent. They need to get the guts and the courage to stand up and to fight for the American people, and especially our law enforcement agencies. All right. Steve Rogers, thank you so much for joining us today and in your insight. Now, according to social media,